one the ray ray of light of light must travel from a denser medium into a less dense medium. Example, light must travel from maybe glass to water or glass to air or water to air. The first medium must be denser than the second medium. So the first condition is that the ray of light must travel from a denser medium into a less dense medium for, for total internal refraction to occur. Then the second condition is that the angle of incidence in the denser medium, angle of incidence, incidence, in the denser medium must be greater than must be greater than the critical angle of the of the medium of the medium of the denser medium the second condition simply means that each and every material each and every dense denser medium has its own critical angle and that is the angle of incidence, which will give you an angle of refraction of 90. Every material has been it glass, being it plastic, being it water, has its own critical angle. When you identify this critical angle and you incident light, light at that angle, you have an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. So the angle of incidence in the denser medium must be greater than the critical angle of the material. Then total internal reflection would occur. So these are the two main conditions for total internal reflection to occur. Any question? Yeah. I don't understand the second condition. The second condition is that, you see, as we were doing it, as we were analyzing total internal reflection, we got to a point where we have a certain angle of incidence in the dense medium. This is the dense medium, the less dense or rare medium. So there's a certain angle of incidence we call as a critical angle, which gave us an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. What I'm saying is that every denser material, glass, plastic, water, has its own critical angle. Okay? Has its own critical angle. And this is public knowledge. I think the critical angle for crown glass, which is used for binoculars, is 42 degrees. So every material has its own. Diamond has its own critical angle, okay? So if you identify the critical angle of the material and you, you incident a ray which is greater than the angle of incidence, the critical angle of the material, 
you have we total internal reflection would occur. So the critical angle in the denser medium must be greater than the critical angle of the medium of the denser medium. Then you are you okay? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Please, any any further question, Mary? Mister, you say that the refractive index can also be the sign of the critical angle. Oh, we are coming the sign to sign of the refractive Hold angle. Hold on, Mary. Do not do not take the wind out of my sail. We'll get there. Okay. Are you okay? We'll analyze that. Please, any more questions? All right. So how then would you explain total internal reflection? Yes, I need a volunteer to try this for me. How would you explain total internal reflection? Anita Roxen. Rock for me. Anita. Did you? Hello. Uh, try for me. How would you explain total internal reflection? Okay. It is a phenomenon that occurs when the angle of incidence in a denser medium is above the critical angle, therefore causing all the refracted rays to be reflected. That's, that is excellent. It's a nice try, okay? Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Can somebody else give it a try as to ex explaining what critical um total internal reflection is please yes who is trying mr Ejia. nanadwa please i think this i think total internal reflection is a phenomenon mm -hmm. which occurs when light travels from a denser medium to a less dense medium mm -hmm. at an angle of incidence that is greater than the critical angle. Okay, that's also great. So whenever light, whenever light travels from a denser medium into a less dense medium, part of the incident light is refracted part of the uh, incident light is reflected. Now the refracted ray, okay, is always stronger in intensity, whereas the reflected ray is weaker in intensity. Now as the angle of incidence in the denser medium is increased progressively, there is a certain angle of incidence in the denser medium that produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees in the less dense medium. And this angle is called, or is known as a critical angle. Now at the attainment of the critical angle, any increase in the angle of uh, incidence or beyond the critical angle causes the incident light to be totally reflected. And this, is the phenomenon, or this is what we call as total internal reflection. So you must state the conditions and explain. Whenever light travels from a denser medium into a less dense medium, part of the incident light is reflected, part of it is refracted. The refracted um, light or ray is brighter in intensity, whereas the reflected is weaker. Now, as we increase the angle of incidence in the denser medium, okay, a certain angle of incidence um, causes the angle of refraction 
to be 90 degrees where the refracted ray is completely on the uh, boundary between the two media. Now, any angle of incidence beyond this critical angle causes the uh, a complete um, reflection of the incident ray. And this is what we call as total internal reflection. Finished. Are we okay? So the, the first re requirement, the first requirement to obtain total internal reflection is that, yes, light must travel from a denser medium into a less dense medium. Now, the angle of incidence in the denser medium must be greater than the critical angle, meaning that when you obtain the critical angle, it's like obtaining total internal reflection because you just would have to go beyond it small and the light will be reflected. Marvelous, are you okay? If we have to example, Hilda, Hilda, Dromo, Adelaide, Ella, yeah, are you all fine? Yes, please. Let's go into the mathematics of total internal reflection. The mathematics of total internal reflection. Now, whenever you take, this is a denser medium, its refractive index is mu d. This is a rare medium. If you have a are you okay? Yes, please. Okay. And this is the boundary or the interface. We learned that whenever you have composite media, the product of the refractive index of the first one times the angle of incidence in the first one. So mu d times the sign of the angle of incidence in the first medium, which is a denser medium, there's a sign of C. Meaning we have the critical angle. That is why we are getting an angle of refraction of 90. So the product of the refractive index of the denser medium times the sign of the angle of incidence in it must be equal to the refractive index of the less dense medium or the rare medium times the sign of the angle of refraction in the dense, uh, less dense medium. And please, what is the angle of refraction here in the less dense medium? What is the value? Nine, 90 so, degrees. So 90 degrees. Thank you. Okay. Now, we, we understand that this is mu d sine c is equal to mu r times sine 90 is 1. So 1. Let's make sine c the subject. Sine c is equal to the refractive index of the rare medium over the refractive in the um, um, index of the denser medium. If we take if we take the sine inverse of this, we have an equation for the critical angle. So the critical angle C is equal to the sine inverse of the, the refractive index of the rare medium. Okay, the, the refractive index of the rare medium over the refractive index of the denser medium. 
Now, so this is, if, if the rare medium, if the rare medium is A, or if the less dense medium is A, now, the refractive index of A, which, which in this case is a rare medium, is equal to one. And so the critical angle C becomes, let me, let me write it here. If the, if the rare medium is A, then the critical angle is equal to sine inverse of one over, over the absolute refractive index of the denser medium. So this equation is when the rare medium can be, it's not A. So whenever you are looking for the critical angle of the denser medium, it is a sine inverse of the ratio of the refractive index of the rare medium over the refractive index of the denser medium. But if the less dense medium is A, then the critical angle is equal to the sine inverse of one over the, um, the absolute refractive index of the denser medium. And Mary, this is what you were talking about. Mary, are you there? Yes, please. Please, is that understood? Yes, please, thank you very much. All right, let me go over for the last time. Let's, let me go over for the last time. So I'm still maintaining the diagram over here. So, there's a refractive index of the denser medium. There's a refractive index of the rare medium, less dense medium. Okay. Now, we learned that the product of the refractive index of the material and the sign of the angle of incidence in it is equal to the product of the refractive index of the rare medium times the sine of the angle of refraction in it. Now, because this is mu d by sine c is equal to mu r. Sine 90 is one, okay, all times one. When we make sine C the subject, sine C is equal to mu R over mu D. Okay, so over here, simply all that we are saying is that if the if the rare medium, if the if the rare medium is not A, this must be sine C the ratio of their absolute refractive indices. But if the less dense medium, medium S, S A, if the less dense medium is A, then the equation becomes sine C is equal to one over the absolute refractive index of the denser medium because, because the refractive index of air or vacuum is equal to one. So this is when the rare medium is air, when the rare medium is not air. So when a question is given to you, you have to look at the situation to decide whether you are using this or you are to use this one. Please, 
all is well. Yes, please. All right. Drum, are you there? Yes, please. Okay. Applications of total internal reflection. Applications. One. Adwa. Adwa Ambonsambio. Is there, dear? Ah, you are there. We are shortening total internal reflection by TIR. So when, when you see TIR, it is your good friend, total internal reflection, okay? One, it is applied in Mirage. It is also applied in binoculars. It is applied in the fish eye view. What is a mirage? Whenever you are walking on, on the street in a hot afternoon, as you walk, it always appears as if there is a pool of water ahead of you. You walk, walk, and you will never catch it. That is a mirage. Please, I'm sure you've seen this before. Have you? No, please. Oh, then walk on a road in a hot afternoon. Or whenever you are driving, you are driving on the road in a hot afternoon, you see the images of trees around, okay, on the road, as if the images of the trees are inside the road. You haven't seen that before too. Please, I don't get it. Oh, I get it. Adua submarine. That is, that is, no, that is not um, mirage. Here they use periscope. In the submarine, they use periscope to view um outside uh, the environs of the water okay um irene what i'm saying is that situations where total internal reflection is applied as mirage formation how how does it work in a what afternoon Whenever you are driving or walking on the road and you look forward or ahead, it, will, it always appears as if there is a pool of water ahead of you. This pool of water, you walk, 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 and you as you walk, as you move on, it also continues to move ahead of you. You go and you never catch it. Or when you are driving, it always appears as if the, the images of trees around are within or on the floor, inverted on the floor. And I'm asking if any of you have seen that before. Mirage formation. Those who journey on the desert, I haven't been there before, claim that Mirages always deceive them, okay? Deceive them and always appearing as if there is a pool of water ahead of them. You see, when, when you journey on the desert because of the scorching sun and then the, 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 the sand, 
the intensity of the wind around very hot. So you naturally be thirsty. So as they walk and they see pool of water ahead of them, they think they they found water. They rush to the scene, and as they as they get closer, the 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 the, the this is illusion also continues to move. They will go, go, and they will never catch it. That is why there is a good saying that you can never catch a mirage. Akofala, are you there? So it's it's an optical illusion which occurs on the road, okay, as a result of total internal reflection. Let's see how this happens. Let's see how this happens. How the mirage, mirages, our mirage is formed. Mr. Dia. Hello. Please, what was the third application? I was talking about a, a mirage, the the binoculars, the binocular vision, and then the first eye view. First eye view. Yes, please. This is the road. The image of the sun is here. Not the, not the image. The sun is here. Beaming. Beaming sun. Beam nation. <laughs> now, you see, whenever the sun shines, the radiant energy hits on the road. As, as, the, as the waves of the, of the heat from the sun hits on the road, is the road. What happens is that the air layer closer to the surface of the road gets heated because the, the stones, whatever on the road gets heated and the, the wave is reflected to it, thereby heating, heating the air, air layer closer to it. Now you realize that because this air layer is close to the road, the air layer above it will be less hotter compared to this one. So let's consider this to be one. This is two. Another air layer above the second one, three, will be less hot compared to two. On and on and on and on. This is four. So because the first one is so close to the road surface, it gets heated up than this one, uh, than, than two, okay? Then three, the air layer three is also less hot compared to two. The fourth one is also less hot compared to three. Please, do you follow what I'm, what I'm trying to put across? I hope you follow. Yes, please. So it always appears as we move up, the temperature of the air layer drops as we move up or at, at a higher altitude, or let me use as we move up, as we move up the atmosphere, the atmosphere, the temperature of the air layer of the air layer Miss Deja, Hello. as we move up please I, 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 oh, put it there put it there <laughs> okay thank you but quickly put it there as we move up the the Hey, temperature. No. As we move up the atmosphere, the temperature 
of the air layer drops. Okay. Now, if the temperature of this air layer and then this one, then this one, and then this one, different, different air layer, is dropping as we move up. Then what can you say about the density of the air layers as we move up? Yes. What can you say about the density of the air layer as we go up? Yes. Can somebody help me? Increasing. The, the, the density will be increasing. Good. Because when air is heated, the density drops. So warm air is less dense compared to cold air. But Brittany, Battles, are you there? Yes. Okay. So as we move, our temperature drops, but density row increases. Rho increases and delta T decreases. So the sunlight, the sunlight coming from up there goes through air layers of of what when it is when the sun the sunlight is coming down, it goes through air layers of what density? Air layers of what as the sunlight comes down, yes. Of oh, help me as the sunlight passes through the air layer of what density will it be increasing or decreasing density? Decrease. Hello, as the sunlight. All ray passes through the air layer. What will you say about the density? Will it be an, an increasing or decreasing density as the ray comes down? A decrease. Yes, a decreasing density because this is cold. So it will be greater than this one. This The density of this will be greater than this one. The density of this will also be. So... The sunlight or ray passes through um, air layers of decreasing density. And so if it is going through air layers of decreasing density, then it will be bending. It will be bending. By the time it gets to the least that ground, it will be bent up. Okay? It will be, it will be passing through air layers of decreasing density. And so this is similar to the ray coming from a denser medium into a less dense medium. And there will be deviation. There will be deviation away from the normal. Away, away. So when you draw the normal here, you realize that it will be deviated away. If you draw a normal here, away, away, away. Okay, now if it gets by the time it gets to the road, it will be bent within total internal reflection. So, an observer over here, an observer watching, watching the image of the sun because of total internal reflection, sees the image of the sun on the like this appearing on the road. So what the observer sees as the pool of water is actually the image of the sun, but he sees it on the within the road and um, virtual because of the progressive bending, because of the progressive bending of the ray as it goes through air layers of different, of decreasing, 
then cities. So the observer over here sees the image of the sun, of the sun over here to be within the road. So what he sees as the pool of water is actually the image of the sun. Please, are we okay? Yes. Hello? The image of the sun or the reflection of the water. The sun's image is I, the sun. Abibia speak, Abibia speak up. The sun's image. Yes. Um, as in the image made like the reflection of the actual water by the what sun or you, the sun appearing no, as water. No, what he sees is not actually water, but it is the image of the brightness of the sun he sees on the surface of the road, but it's not water. Don't forget, if it is water, during scorching sunshine, it will be a, what the water would evaporate. Okay, so as he stands ahead and then he stands and then views ahead. What he sees as the pool of water.